Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to our show. Don't you think it's just a little bit strange that Ronald Reagan had an operation on his asshole and George Bush had an operation on his middle finger, huh? <laughs> huh? What are these two men trying to tell us? Now, I'd like to begin tonight with an opening announcement. Because of the FCC, I'm never sure of what it is I'm allowed to say. So, so, I now have my own official policy. This is the language you will not be hearing tonight. You will not hear me say bottom line, game plan, role model, scenario, or hopefully. I will not kick back, mellow out, or be on a roll. I will not go for it, and I will not check it out. I don't even know what it is. And when I leave here, I definitely will not boogie. <laughs> I promise not to refer to anyone as a class act, a beautiful person, or a happy camper. <laughs> I will also not be saying, what a guy. And you will not hear me refer to anyone's lifestyle. If you want to know what a moronic word lifestyle is, all you have to do is realize that in a technical sense, Attila the Hun had an active outdoor lifestyle. I will also not be saying any cute things like, moi. And I will not use the French adverb tray to modify any English adjectives such as tray awesome, tray gnarly, tray fabu, tray intense, or tray out of sight. I will not say concept when I mean idea. I will not say impacted when I mean affected. There will be no hands-on state-of-the-art networking. We will not maximize, prioritize, or finalize, and we definitely will not interface. There will also... There will also be no new age lingo spoken here tonight. No support group jargon from the human potential movement. For instance, I will not share anything with you. I will not relate to you, and you will not identify with me. I will give you no input, and I will expect no feedback. This will not be a learning experience, nor will it be a growth period. There'll be no sharing, no caring, no birthing, no bonding, no parenting, no nurturing. We will not establish a relationship, we will not have any meaningful dialogue, and we definitely will not spend any quality time. We will not be supportive of one another so that we can get in touch with our feelings in order to feel good about ourselves. And if you're one of those people who needs a little space, please, go the fuck outside! <laughs> yeah. Now time for me to get a little drink of water. Figure this stuff is safe to drink? Huh? Actually, I don't care if it's safe or not, I drink it anyway. You know why? Because I'm an American and I expect a little cancer in my food and water. That's right. I'm a loyal American and I'm not happy unless I've let government and industry poison me a little bit every day. Let me have a few hundred thousand carcinogens here. 
Ah, little cancer never hurt anybody. Everybody needs a little cancer, I think. It's good for you. Keeps you on your toes. Besides, I ain't afraid of cancer. I had broccoli for lunch. <laughs> broccoli kills cancer. A lot of people don't know that. It's not out yet. It's true. You find out you got some cancer, get yourself a fucking bowl of broccoli. That'll wipe it right out in a day or two. Cauliflower, too. Cauliflower kills the really big cancers. The ones you can see through clothing from across the street. <laughs> Broccoli kills the little ones. The ones that are slowly eating you away from inside. While your goddamn goofy half-educated doctor keeps telling you, You're doing fine, Jim. In fact, bring your doctor a bowl of broccoli. He's probably got cancer, too. Probably picked it up from you. They don't know what they're doing. It's all guesswork in a white coat. Here, let me have a few more sips of industrial waste. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, maybe, maybe I can turn them cancers against one another. That's what you got to hope for, you know, that you get more than one cancer, so they eat each other up instead of you. In fact, the way I look at it, the more cancer you got, the healthier you are. Well, I know some people don't like you to talk about those things. I know that. Some people don't like you to mention certain things. Some people don't want you to say this. Some people don't want you to say that. Some people think if you mention some things, they might happen. Some people are really fucking stupid. <laughs> Did you ever notice that? How many really stupid people you run into during the day? God damn, there's a lot of stupid bastards walking around. Carry a little pad and pencil with you. You wind up with 30 or 40 names by the end of the day. Look at it this way. Think of how stupid the average person is, and then realize half of them are stupider than that. <laughs> and it doesn't take you very long to spot one of them, does it? Take you about eight seconds. You'll be listening to some guy. You say, this guy is fucking stupid. <laughs> then, then there are some people, they're not stupid. They're full of shit. Huh? That doesn't take very long to spot either, does it? Take you about the same amount of time. You'll be listening to some guy and say, Well, he's fairly intelligent. Ah, he's full of shit. <laughs> huh? yeah. Then there are some people, they're not stupid, they're not full of shit, they're fucking nuts! Dan Quayle is all three! All three! Stupid, full of shit, and fucking nuts! And where did he get that wife of his? Have you taken a good look at that Marilyn Quayle? Where did he get her? At a Halloween party or something? She looks like Prince Charles, for Christ's sakes! Let me ask you something. Does he actually have to fuck that woman? Huh? God help him, I wouldn't fuck her with a stolen dick. That's my political humor. People like it when you're topical.